Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle and this is Phrase Foliage. Hi, how's everyone doing? Happy March. It is currently March 22nd, so we are almost at April and I don't know how that keeps happening. Um, time is flying. I feel like every single time I sit down to make a video um, or kind of sit down to plan out videos I want to do, it's already somehow two months later in the year. So I have been sitting on some video ideas, one of which is to do a monthly segment called Blank Favorites. You guessed it, monthly segment being whatever month we're in, we're gonna talk about favorites. Um, and of course that's going to be planty-esque favorites. Um, in this case, I'm going to show you guys a few plant products that I have just been really loving, um, in addition to some of the plants that I've really been loving as well. So if that's something that you are interested in, continue watching this video. And I'm going to start trying to make this an actual monthly segment. So definitely stay tuned for that. And of course, if you guys aren't already following me on Instagram, where I tend to be a lot more active, um, please do follow me there at Phrase Foliage. It is the same handle I have here on YouTube. And yeah, let us just get right into March favorites since by the time I get this video, I have a feeling it's going to be April. So let me just stop talking. Okay, so we're going to start this video out with more of the planty-esque things that I have just been really loving slash have been helping me, you know, manage my plant care a lot more or have just been, you know, making my life a lot easier. Um, so we're going to start with those products. And the first one that I'm going to just mention right off the bat is my Ikea cabinet behind me. This is the Redstow wide version. I can link it down below. Um, I did buy it from Ikea. So yeah, I did get really lucky. I actually did have this sh uh, shipped to my home, so I didn't have to actually drive out to go pick it up anything like that. Um, if you guys have any questions on this cabinet, feel free to just drop them down below. There are a few YouTubers here um, that I've started seeing a lot more of actually coming up um, and out with more Rudsta videos, specifically the Y1, um, which I actually plan on doing a lot of maintenance to the Rudsta. That's going to also be a video that I'm planning. But yeah, overall, highly, highly, highly recommend getting and investing in an Ikea cabinet. Um, I know they can be scarce to come by, so let me just preface with saying just any type of glass cabinet, um, a display cabinet of any sort where you can just trap humidity in, your plants are going to thank you. So I currently live in Chicago. Uh, we have all five seasons and spring is definitely one where we get, did I just say all five seasons? We get all four seasons. <laughs> Um, that just shows you what Chicago springtime, springtime does to a person. So currently, like I mentioned, it's March 22nd. We just came off of a heavy, um, like hot spell, I want to say. It was like 66 for two days straight. And now we're in a gloomy, dark mess. That is Chicago in a nutshell. We have five seasons, the fifth one being construction, but that's only a Chicago joke. So Chicago viewers sound off in the comments down below. But anyway... Can you tell I haven't talked to many people today? But yes, all in all, if you don't have some type of glass cabinet and or an Ikea cabinet, I highly recommend investing in one. Like I mentioned, this is the Ikea Red Style Wide um, in the black color, and it does come with three inserted shelves. And like I mentioned, I will be doing some maintenance on this cabinet in the near future. So stay tuned for those videos. Now, another planty product that I've really been loving that has just been helping me so much are these microfiber gloves. Now, I believe I have these in another video. Um, I will link them down below in the description as well as them being on my Amazon storefront. Um, but these have just been amazing for cleaning. I mean, these can be used to clean not just your plants, but anything in your house. Um, so they're just really soft microfiber gloves. They're like a one size fits all, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe there's like a two different sizes. But yeah, this is how this guy looks. Um, they are just super fuzzy. They pick up any lint, any dust, whatever. Um, so they're very good for dusting your plant's leaves, as you may have guessed. So yes, these have been making the cleaning process of my plants a lot easier. I am not someone that partially likes cleaning my plant's leaves, especially when it's a plant like a ZZ or something, where there's just so many little leaves that you really have to get in there. Um, I am definitely the type of person that would rather throw my plant into the bathtub and just give it a good deep old showering. Um, I still will go through and kind of wipe off any of like the, the water so there aren't any like water stains on my plant's leaves. Um, but that's only if I'm really feeling like it. So I won't lie, cleaning my leaves isn't something that I used to claim as a priority, but now that I've gotten these guys, it has made it a lot easier. So yeah, I mean, I just use these to dust um, for the most part, just the leaves if I do need to you know use these for like home cleaning I will definitely not use them for my plants 
um, I'll just throw these in the washing machine, wash them, disinfect them, make sure that they're, you know, not being used with any type of chemicals. And yeah, I'll just reuse them for my plants. So definitely recommend get, getting yourself um, some microfiber gloves as we're also heading into summer where obviously the light outside is going to naturally increase with, you know, the sun gracing us with her presence a little bit more now it's that it's after daylight savings time. Um, but yeah, you're definitely going to want to ensure that your plant is able to photosynthesize and doesn't have, you know, a half inch thick layer of dust on its leaves. So definitely, if you haven't already done your spring cleaning, start doing that with your plants. This next product is not one that I ever thought I would actually purchase. Um, I was a bit wary only for the fact of I kept seeing every single person talk about this product and in my head that tells me, okay, A, everyone's using it so it must be good, but B, why is everyone using it? So I was a little bit skeptical. Um, I didn't really want to invest in it at first and then finally a few months ago I decided, you know what, everyone's talking about it, no one has anything bad to say about it, let's just see what it's all about and the product I'm talking about is Liquidur. So if you don't already know what Liquidur is, it is a highly concentrated plant food that basically comes in this little pouch or there's a variety of ways you can buy it, but this is the most common. Um, you basically get this pouch flat. It has whatever the plant fertilizer, you know, food is within it. Um, you just pour in a cup of water and this is your concentrate. So what you do is take about, um, I believe it's for every gallon you want to have a tablespoon or... Um, yeah, so you want one cap full of the concentrate for every gallon that you use. So it's really a small amount, very concentrated. So, uh, you basically, you know, we'll take that cap full, put it into your gallon and you don't even water with that gallon. You further dilute that. So yeah, so this is a very highly concentrated plant food, but oh my gosh, guys, I did not think I'd actually see results. I am seeing results. So the plants that I'm going to show you later on as being my March favorite plants, um, more or less they are my favorite because they have started actually growing because of liquid dirt. Now, I'm going to put an asterisk by liquid dirt because I feel like my Ikea rust cabinet had a lot to do with it as well. So I'm just going to say that the combination of liquid dirt fertilizer slash plant food and an Ikea cabinet slash just optimal humidity for your plants, and I'm saying like 60 to 70 degrees, 60 to 70 percent, you're just going to see amazing results. At least I have. So I invested in it. I did use a YouTuber's code. Um, it was Harley G's code just because I, okay, she was like the first plant person I found. So like in my eyes, she is my mother. Um, but yeah, there are so many YouTubers out there. You can just look up probably Liquider and you'll find a code to use. And yeah, go support a small creator um, or, you know, purchase this amazing product from the seller themselves. I mean, I, I can't say enough good things. Okay, guys, the next planty product on my list is not something that's new. Um, it's definitely something that I always use, but I swear by it. Um, and that is this amazing continuous mister. Yes, it does have an acne patch on it. We're just gonna flip it this way. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those really simple continuous misters. As you can see, super easy to use. Now I'm all wet but it is a very, very, very fine mist. Um, it is so simple. Again, you just, and it keeps misting. Um, I definitely love to touch up the plants inside of my cabinet. I'll typically mist my Ikea cabinet two times a day just to kind of amp up the humidity. It does typically stay around, yeah, right now it's around 60. Um, if it is very sunny in this room and there is a west window right next to me, if there is sun coming through the west window, it does tend to kind of enhance that greenhouse effect. Um, but misting never does, you know, never hurts a plant. Um, at least in my opinion, I haven't experienced anything negative as it pertains to misting. Yes, it will not always increase your humidity, your humidity as much as you may want, but to each their own, right? So I have a lot of new leaves coming in right now since it is springtime and, you know, thanks to Miss Liquidur, um, a lot of new growth has been coming in. So for any of my philodendron slash monstera plants that I do see new growth, um, they typically do get stuck because the humidity in my home other than, you know, within my cabinet isn't as high as it probably should be for the plants. So probably sits around 30 to 40 percent humidity is typically where my house is, you know, in and of itself. Um, so my Monstera not being inside my cabinet, obviously my plant is going to need some extra humi extra humidity. So I will just go by with this continuous mister and just spritz up and give that 
new leaf, some extra loving since the last time my Monstera Deliciosa tried to put out a new leaf. Um, I didn't give it enough humidity and I did end up losing the newest growth. So I am trying my very hardest to ensure I get a new leaf. Everything we can. But yeah, this Continuous Mister is amazing. I know that they've started selling these in big box stores, um, but I got mine off of Amazon. So if you guys are interested, I'll link that down below. Okay, guys, that is basically all I have for the planty products I've really been enjoying. Okay, we are getting to the bread and butter of this video. I know this is what you guys were waiting for. So now is the time to go through my favorite plants. And oh my god, one is already peeking out. So let's just start with her. Um, my Hoya Bella has just been going insane. Um, yeah, I mean, she's been doing so well. Again, I think this is a lot to do with introducing liquid dirt, introducing the cabinet. Uh, this plant previously did live in a plastic greenhouse. Um, if you guys know what I'm talking about, it's like that three tier, uh, pretty cheapy Amazon greenhouse that comes with that like plastic exterior lining, which that did keep humidity kind of up. Um, it did have about like an inch, inch and a half gap at the very bottom where I'm assuming a lot of moisture and humidity escaped. Um, but ever since, again, getting this cabinet, my Hoya have just been impeccable. I cannot believe just how well they're doing. And I will say that I, as a beginner, felt very discouraged. Um, I fell in love with Hoya very quickly. Again, I watched a lot of Harley G videos to start. So my obsession with Hoya did come from her and for good reason. I mean, can you, how could you not like this plant? Like, this is absolutely gorgeous. She's wonky as heck. But anyway, I did invest in a few Hoya and obviously i didn't have optimal conditions i didn't know really what i was doing um and now that i'm actually you know into my second year of caring for plants on this type of level and seeing just the progress i'm getting it makes me really happy so i'm gonna give myself a little pat on the back there but my hoya bella when i first got this um she had this this didn't exist this is like one of the newest growth points that have just popped out but she basically looked like a y like a slingshot um, and she was very, very short. Like if I have any pictures, I will insert, but she has just been popping off. And I think this is again due to liquid dirt and the cabinet, but she is super happy, getting super long. I may propagate this soon. So that may be a video coming on how to propagate Hoya. I personally have never done that, but I'm excited to do because I want my Hoya to just be super full and fun. Um, but she sits in this planter, which quite frankly, this side is a little bit creepy. So I'm kind of glad that she's been growing this way, um, so that I don't have to really look at the face on the other side. But yeah, my Hoya Bella has made me really happy in addition to all of my Hoya, my other Hoya. Um, so while we're on that topic, my Hoya Australis, Australis, however you choose to pronounce it, has also just been taking off uh when i first got this plant she had four leaves but yeah she has just been again loving life uh she was on a chopstick for a while i took her off just because the cabinet is not tall enough to kind of support her going up more so i've just been kind of letting her droop and do her thing and it's been super exciting to watch like i haven't seen much growth come from this plant and again it was really discouraging um, I really wanted to see my Hoya grow and I didn't realize that Hoya are just such slow growers, but that's only if they're not in optimal conditions, right? So now that I've actually figured out the science to these plants, I have been so happy like waking up every day and I'll run over to my cabinet and be like, oh my God, what Hoya leaf just bloomed? Or like, you know, I haven't gotten the Hoya bloom. Let me just say that. But like what leaf popped out and is actually, you know, about to grow? Like there is a new growth point. I don't know if you guys will be able to see. Like, it's, it's just going. And so it makes me really happy. She's in a little plastic pot uh, with drainage. I have increased the amount of water I give my Hoya just because I saw somewhere on uh, Instagram, someone mentioned that Hoya actually prefer to have more water. Um, I tested that theory and my Hoya have been doing really well. So again, don't quote me on that, but if you're comfortable with potentially overwatering your plants slightly, which I am notoriously doing, um, you may see some good results there. Okay, in a similar family, but not really, um, we have my variegated string of hearts. Now this is going to be a little bit difficult to show off since I do have to tip, um, but this guy, long story short, I did have my variegated string of hearts, um, planted in soil. It was a pretty chunky, airy, kind of like a cactus soil mix, um, and the plant was growing. It was doing... Not a lot, 
Um, oh, wow. I just found another growth point. Ah, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. But basically what was happening when I had this plant in soil, it was in a terracotta planter. Um, I prefer terracotta. Now that I have this cabinet, I'm trying to keep everything within a plastic nursery pot for, you know, the weight factor. Um, but the case was is that I was not seeing like any growth and if I did see growth on this plant the hearts were just the tiniest hearts imaginable so I remember going to a plant shop one day in Chicago and I was chatting it up with a guy who was selling variegated string of hearts um I will actually insert the shop here because it is a small business in Chicago and it's in my neighborhood so if you're ever in the northwest side of Chicago go to this plant shop I don't know where it's going to be on the screen but put it in um but anyway, I was talking to him and basically I was joking saying that my variegated string of hearts hearts are just coming in like miniature. And he made a joke being like, oh, is there a new, like a new variety of string of hearts where it's a mini? And I started researching because I legitimately thought that like, you know, did I get bamboozled with, with a plant that doesn't really exist? No, it was just because I wasn't giving it what it needed. So I think all in all this plant, um... A, should not have been put into soil when I did. Um, so that was again on my bad. I had been propagating them for months. They had like the big bulbs, they had roots established. So I thought that I could just plant it up in the soil um, and all things would be fine. But it turns out that at least in my care and in my experience, putting the plant back into sphagnum has helped it grow so much more and so much faster. Um, yeah, basically like my leaves would, or my hearts would always be that tiny. Like they would never grow larger than that size basically. And as you can see, I mean, I'm getting some substantially larger sized leaves. Like compare that set of leaves to the next set over. This is newer growth than that. That says enough. Um, but yeah, I have just been seeing growth on this plant nonstop. Again, um, I did have this plant in that like cheapy greenhouse cabinet that I had before that was plastic. I did have um, this when it was still planted in soil in my Ikea cabinet. So I don't know if the soil really was just something that was kind of hindering it. But again, liquid dirt was introduced into the equation. So I really cannot tell you guys what did it. But um, now that this plant is actually growing again, I am actually happy. Like there was a point where... I was planning on going to a plant swap in Chicago and I was going to bring this whole thing and just tell someone like if you have a cool like Hoya or philodendron that you want to trade for like here's this um and now that it's actually growing I'm like oh I was about to give this away um in a trade scene but now I really don't want to because she's actually growing and it makes me really happy so yeah um I can't wait for this to I have to moisten up the sphagnum a little bit more one bad thing is that this does have a drainage hole so um you know ideally this wouldn't so that i wouldn't have to refill the water so frequently but yeah she is doing so well she's being so happy um maybe i'll actually be able to plant this up and get some nice trailing action off the edge of a planter pot i'm just really stoked for this plant now and i didn't think i would be so yeah i'm just happy i held on to this plant and i didn't give up on it even though there were some days I definitely wanted to. Okay, and I think this is the last plant I wanna talk about. Um, I could talk all day long about my Hoya. I did really wanna show my Hoya Abovada. Um, it's currently putting off a new, putting out a new leaf. Um, it's super small and tiny. My Hoya Abovada, let me just get it. Let me just get it. Here she is in all of her glory. Now, this is my Hoya Abovada. When I did get this plant, it did come with about four leaves, so these bottom was four and it did have this long runner um where again you're seeing all of the growth come from so she's super wonky and just kind of goes up um I am actually planning on trading um propagations from this plant it is my Hoya Abavada Splash um with a friend from Instagram so once it does get warmer um we are going to go through the trading process um and most likely, I'm not sure where I'm going to actually make the cuts. This new leaf is actually still coming in, as you can see. And I believe there should be some more coming in. Um, but yeah, I <laughs> haven't cut this girl up just yet since she is putting out the new leaf. So I want to be kind of respectful of that and not stress her out. But the leaves do come in super dark and then they establish those like speckling patterns. Um, but yeah, I love this girl. 
Again, this is the newest growth that I've experienced. Um, these three leaves take a long time. So I'm hoping that with the introduction of liquid dirt, I'm just going to see more and more growth come off of this plant. And I do really love it. Um, this is one of the first Hoya that I saw again from Harley G where I was like, I need to have it. So I got it. Okay, now truthfully, this will be the last plant I talk about. And it's mainly one that I don't see a lot about on social. Um, and I think it's because a lot of people just have a hard time taking care of them and I definitely do too but it's a plant that is just so like I'm staring at it only because it feels familiar and I don't know why and I don't know how to describe it um but that is a rabbit's foot fern I don't know what it is about this plant like it's just yes like I definitely have a lot of crispiness going on you can see the super creepy like rabbit's feet like it's it's the weirdest plant like there are angles like when I look at the plant like this I go she's beautiful she's stunning she looks magical and then I see the little feet and I see the little ferns growing out of the feet because they grow in this like weird little circle like I don't this plant just makes me feel like this is I don't know like a different world it came from a different world um it came from like a book that I read it may have came from Stephanie Meyer's dreamscape when she was creating Twilight. I am not sure, but she feels familiar. And I've seen a lot of people on Instagram um, and TikTok and just social media in general mention that they struggle with ferns. And I definitely don't have like ideal conditions. As you can see, like there's a bunch of crispiness, if you can see, and just like dead ferns within here, but she still keeps throwing out these crazy rabbit feet and like the new rounded um fronds it's just it's a really cool experience so if you don't have a fern i would highly recommend getting one um i love this rabbit's nest fern rabbit rabbit's foot fern it's a name um i highly recommend getting a rabbit's foot fern but if not i would definitely recommend getting a bird's nest fern that is one that i have as well and there's that cool new i don't know if it's like a hybrid um but it's the hurricane bird's nest fern that kind of grows in circular when I think of a fern, I mean, I definitely see something that looks like this, but never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined that. So I think that's just where I'm like, okay, it's a beautiful, normal everyday plant, but with some magical elements going on. So if you want like a pretty cool, interesting, like almost magical plant, uh, highly recommend highly recommend. All right, guys, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Let me know what your March favorites have been, either plant products or plants or honestly anything. Is there a movie that you've really been loving? Is there a show that you just can't stop watching? Comment that down below. And now that it is springtime, I'm starting to feel more energized as it pertains to creating content and actually taking care of my plants since they're not as dormant as they used to be. So if there's any type of video that you would like to see um, me make or me kind of go through, definitely comment that down below. I would love to hear your ideas. But yes, I hope you guys enjoy this video. And if you haven't already, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.